Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. Police in New Zealand have shot and killed an extremist after he stabbed and wounded at least six people in Auckland in a supermarket. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern said the incident was a terrorist attack carried out by a Sri Lankan national who was under police surveillance. Of the six wounded people, three are in a critical condition and one is in a serious condition. That's according to health officials. The man, who has not been identified, was a supporter of the Islamic State terrorist group. Ms Ardern said the police killed him within 60 seconds of the attack on Friday. What happened today was despicable. It was hateful. It was wrong. It was carried out by an individual, not a faith, not a culture, not an ethnicity, but an individual person who was gripped by ideology that is not supported here by anyone or any community. He alone carries the responsibility for these acts. Let that be where the judgment falls. The death toll of Hurricane Ida in the U.S. Northeast has risen to at least 45 people as New York City and New Jersey saw unprecedented levels of rainfall leading to flooding. A witness filmed cars partially submerged in water in New Jersey. Drone footage also shows severely damaged homes and rooftops in Louisiana, where one million people have been left without power. Joe Biden has declared that a historic investment was needed to deal with the climate crisis. Thousands of Taliban fighters are taking on forces in the last province resisting the radical Islamist takeover. <laughs> The National Resistance Front says it has pushed back a Taliban advance and controls all entrances to the Panjshir Valley. Senior Taliban leader Amir Khan Motaji has called on the residents of the Panjshir Valley to lay down their weapons, but they have refused to give up despite being entirely surrounded. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Taliban are expected to announce who will be part of their government in the next few days. Japan's Prime Minister Yoshide Suga has said he will not run for re-election as party leader this month, signalling the end of his tenure. Mr Suga had been appointed to the role just a year ago following the resignation of Shinzo Abe. The shock announcement comes as Mr Suga's approval ratings drop to an all-time low. Japan, which is still under a state of emergency, is now grappling with its worst ever Covid wave. Nearly 4,500 people have fallen sick in the south of the Democratic Republic of Congo following a toxic leak from a diamond mine in neighboring Angola. The Environment Minister Eve Bazaiba has said 12 people have died. She announced the Democratic Republic of Congo would ask for reparations for the damage caused, but did not specify an amount. There has been no response so far from the mining company. An Islamic State group suspect from the UK has pleaded guilty in a US court to multiple charges relating to the murder of four American hostages. Alexander Cote is accused of belonging to an IS cell dubbed the Beatles, which was involved in kidnappings in Iraq and Syria. The IS cell was allegedly responsible for the beheadings of a number of Western and Japanese hostages. Cote pleaded guilty to all eight charges. North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un has called on his officials to deal with food supply issues and highlighted the danger of climate change. <laughs> Typhoons have badly impacted vital crops last year, while weeks of drought followed by heavy monsoon rains have damaged them this year as well. Kim Jong-un said measures to overcome abnormal climate were needed and asked officials to tackle drought and floods. And finally, pop legends ABBA have surprised and delighted fans by announcing their first studio album for 40 years. ABBA Voyage will be released in November before a so-called revolutionary set of concerts where virtual avatars will play hits like Mamma Mia and Waterloo. The quartet, who split up in 1982, said they ended up back in the recording studio while working on the stage show. The first, I Still Have Faith in You, is an affectionate piano ballad portraying the bond between the four band members. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.